shifting from right to left. Play action to that side. Rolling right, looking. Fires in the end zone. Got a man. Oh, touchdown. That's a tight end for 15 yards. Welcome to the Bowl Season Stories Podcast, Season 3, Episode 14. I'm Nick Carparelli, the Executive Director of Bowl Season, and today we are joined by Conference USA Commissioner Judy McLeod and former Tulane Green Wave and current Buffalo Bills linebacker Dorian Williams. If you missed any of our previous episodes, you can catch them on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, or anywhere else you listen to your podcasts. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd appreciate you to like, subscribe, and drop a five-star rating. And as always, you can follow all the bowl season news on our website, bowlseason.com, and on social media at Bowl Season. Today's show is brought to you by Sport Radar, reimagining immersive experiences for sports fans and betters. Our first guest became the third commissioner of Conference USA in 2015, and also became the first female commissioner of an FBS conference. She recently completed a four-year stint as the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Oversight Committee Chair. Please welcome to the show, Judy McLeod. Judy, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Great to be with you today. Well, we mentioned in the intro that you were the first female commissioner of an FBS conference in 2015. Uh, we've, you've since been joined by Gloria Navarez in that you know, capacity when she was named commissioner of the Mountain West Conference last year. Can you talk about the importance of female leadership in college athletics, specifically in the male-dominated sport of football? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think diversity is extremely important, and that that comes in a variety of ways, obviously. Um, I was just reading an article about women on boards and different things they bring, and so I do think there's a maybe a different way sometimes that women approach things um, that's necessary in the mix, but you know, having said that, you know, Gloria and I are different people. So it's hard to just categorize it one way or, or the other. I think this is a people organization. Um, but really the most important thing for me, I think, is um, having young people see that there's a path, uh, see that there's somebody that, that might look like them and, and um, enable them to, you know, not put any limits on themselves as to what they can accomplish with. That's a great answer. I completely agree with that, Judy. Um, well, bowl season is such a special time of year. We're, we're just a few weeks away from Selection Sunday. It serves as a reward for football programs across the country at the end of a successful season. Tell us about your specific bowl partnerships and why bowl games are so important to your football programs in Conference USA. Yeah, we have a variety of, of partnerships, and those have developed over the years into some really great relationships. And you know, we're with the ESPN, what I like to call their family of bulls. And so uh, Clint Overby has done a fabulous job with that group. But each and every uh, bull director also contributes greatly. We have a relationship with the New Orleans Bowl um, and then uh, the Independence Bowl on certain years. Uh, we do have a backup um, with a quick lane Detroit Bowl um, that we haven't played in yet. Uh, but... Um, I think the thing that amazes me the most when I go to these games is how much, and I, and, and I know this is a bowl podcast, but reality, very sincerely, how much each bowl director, director cares about the student athletes experience. And, you know, it's real. It's not just, uh, you know, we, we want the student athletes to enjoy their experience, but, um, you can see them during that week and if things go well you know you see the elation if the one little thing is off they're they're on it and and they want it to be perfect so i think you know having this having those relationships for our conference um has been wonderful for our schools you know we get to go to locations like the bahamas and hawaii and everything in between but well more importantly just a reward for everyone that's worked so hard not just the student athletes, they're the key, obviously, but the trainers, the equipment managers, the academic people, everybody that's poured into these young people during the year, you know, get a chance to relax, be with their team. I love it. I love watching the seniors. Um, you know, some of them, that's their last time they'll play. And, and so it all comes together for a really special experience. I think you're spot on, Judy. The Bowls across the country, they're so proud to host 
your institutions and your student athletes, and they really try hard to show everybody involved what's unique about their community. Um, and to that point, you know, you've been involved in a lot. What, what have been some of your favorite bowl season memories in your career, both, both as a commissioner as well as during your time as an AD? Yeah, mine, mine usually center around just uh, watching the kids have that experience. And, um, you know, when I was at Tulsa, we were uh, not a good football program for quite a while. And um, one of my goals was to turn that around before I left. And, uh, you know, that first bowl game that, that the school had been to in, I'm going to say, 10 plus years um, was pretty special. I, th I think we got beat pretty bad on the field, <laughs> but uh, just to just to see the excitement. Um, and then, you know, now as a commissioner, you're a little bit more removed. Uh, you don't actually know the student athletes very well. Sometimes we get to meet some of them and interact with some of them during the year, but um, you know, I probably said this to your last question, just seeing that senior that, that knows he probably doesn't have a chance to play at the next level, but he's going to do some great things, have that time with his teammates and his coaches, um, the families around. It's just a, a great celebration. It's hard for me to pick, uh, one or another because they're all fantastic. Well, let's look back at your time as director of athletics. You were credited with building a complete athletic program at Tulsa. Um, you kind of answered this question a little bit uh, just a minute ago, but what are some of the biggest challenges and triumphs uh, from that experience and how did that prepare you for your job today as commissioner? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with the football one since I just talked about that. And, um, you know, it's amazing how tough it is you know, if you go, if you have 0 for seasons or win a couple games and that affects so much in your department, keeping staff morale up, obviously the team, the coaches, it's not like they're not trying, you know, and so turning a program and uh, turning that culture, I know culture is an overused word probably today, um, but turning that around, it, it takes a lot and it takes some special people to do that. And so um, that's one of the things I was most proud of at Tulsa. At the same time, uh, during my tenure, we added three women's sports. We added basketball, if you can believe that. They didn't have basketball when, when I arrived. Um, uh, women's rowing and softball. And so uh, just creating a department where everybody supported each other um, was very important to me. And uh, yeah, I, there's no question. You know, I don't. I, I became an AD at a, a pretty young age to be an AD, and um, you think you're you might be ready. Maybe you don't even think you're ready. Um, but there's sitting in the chair, and actually dealing with what you get to deal with or get the opportunity and challenges um, along the way. There's just no replacement for that. And so, as a commissioner now, our ADs know. Hey, she sat in the chair. She had to deal with the things I'm dealing with now. Um, and so it, it it has really helped me in my job in the conference office um, to understand what they go, go, go through on a daily basis. Sometimes, Judy, I don't know if any of us ever know that we're ready, right? You just got to <laughs> do the best you can when you're put in that situation. And you've certainly been faced and you, you your commissioner colleagues have been faced with some very unusual times and, and issues. Uh, NIL is certainly one of them. Uh, you served on the NCAA NIL Legislation Solutions Working Group. That's a mouthful. What was that experience like? Uh, what did what came out of that group and how do you see NIL evolving in the future? Yeah, so this was one of the early, early groups. And um, we actually were working prior to NIL uh, being in action. And, and uh, you know, you, you have those frustrations Well, once in a while where you're like, oh, if I would have done this this way. You know, we as a group came up with a pretty, what we all thought was a good package of rules, regulations that we could implement. And then due to legal issues, that package was never um, put in place. And so would it have solved some of the things that are going on today? You know, who knows? 
Uh, would we have more lawsuits? Probably. And so, um, but really the people I got to work with on that group were fantastic. I think uh, Bob Bullsby and Grace Calhoun co-chaired that. Um, and it was just, Gene Smith was in there. It was just a really good group that was trying to find solutions to something that hadn't happened yet. Um, and I think there was a good roadmap that we developed. Uh, I think later committees have use that kind of as a starting point. Um, so a little frustrating that, you know, we let everybody just go crazy and, without regulations, but. Well, I can't imagine um, at that time, you that you and that group could have possibly contemplated where we would be two and a half years later. Yeah, you're, you're right. Um, you know, we talked about boosters being involved and, you know, on at some campuses, some of your best boosters, you would want those people to be involved because they're very good business people, um, but not in a recruiting way that has obviously happened now. And um, so we'll see. I mean, there's, I, I don't think there's, I don't know that anyone said it out loud, but I don't think there's anyone that really, that disagrees with wanting student athletes to be able to benefit and, and grow and have those opportunities. Um, but the recurring part is, is really become a nightmare. I need to ask you about conference realignment. I'm sure this is your absolute favorite topic, uh, everybody's favorite topic. You've been a part of previous iterations of realignment, as well as obviously this most recent wave. What are your perspectives on conference realignment in general, and how have you seen it impact Conference USA specifically? Yeah, Um you know, I still have something written on my wall here. I have a, one of those walls that you write on. And uh, early on, one of our staff members wrote, trust no one. And it has not been erased. And that's the unfortunate side of conference realignment. Um, and we got hit pretty hard this last this last go around. Um, you know, conference realignment is hard anyway. Uh, but if people handle it the right way, and follow the rules that are set, you know, it, it, it makes it manageable. Um, it's, um, it's, I, I, you know, I look back and, and, uh, I got asked a couple of weeks ago, you know, what are some of the biggest challenges you've been through? And I, I started thinking and our, some of our staff was, in the room, they looked at me like, really? You're not going to say conference realignment? I'm like, oh, yeah. But, I mean, in this in this career that we've chosen, um, you tackle what you need to tackle, and then you move on to the next one. Um, but, you know, the, there was a time during it that you're thinking, you know, is conference USA going to survive? And there's no way I'm going to um, let this not survive you know, on, on your watch. And I, I don't think at the time people thought that could really happen, you know, and then we've seen, unfortunately, what's happened with the Pac-12. And I and then people come back to me and say, oh, that could have happened to you guys, huh? And it's like, don't, don't bring it back. <laughs> because the reality is we are so, so excited about the group we have right now. Everyone's together. They're working extremely hard. They're hungry. Um, our new members have made incredible contributions. And so, you know, we survived and, and we moved on. And if you remember what you're doing it for, and that's to provide these opportunities for young people, then you get through it. Is it, you know, uh, the, the part that's really sad for me is some of it doesn't make sense, common sense wise. Um, I mean, we all know people are trying to do what's right for their program and so you can't um blame them for that either you know when i was an ad we went through it um i was the ad that moved tulsa into comfort usa and so i also understand the pressures you get as an ad um if you're not always looking for what's best for your program so it's part of who we are it doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes you know, I'm hoping we could get some kind of regional alignment for some of our sports scheduling um, in some different sports that might make more sense and might be more beneficial for our student athletes. So 
it just presents different challenges and you work through them. Well, you've done a great job keeping it all together and you, you use the word opportunity. You know, I'm just, just thinking out loud when, after you said that, you know, Liberty, New Mexico state, two teams that didn't even have a conference, you know, a year ago, two years ago, Liberty's 11 and 0, New Mexico state, great story this year, nine and three, you have Jacksonville state elevating to, to the FCS level and they're eight and three great, great stories. Right. And you provided opportunities for those institutions to do those things. Yeah, absolutely. You're spot on. You know, I said we couldn't be happier with our new new members that are achieving so much, but um, now they have a place to do it. You know, uh, for Liberty to never be able to, or New Mexico State never be able to play for a conference championship, that's missing. You know, that's a that's a big miss. Um, that that things, you know, those conference championships, I thought we talk about bowl games, but conference championships are another one that some, some young people, that's, that's their chance at a championship. And so in all sports. And so um, we're really happy where we are. Uh, we're not content at all. We're going to keep uh, pushing forward and pushing hard, but, um, but we've come through it uh, in a good way. Final question for you. In this time of great change and unpredictability in college athletics, what do you think, or should I say hope, the next 12 months has in store for us? That's a big one. Um, you know, I don't want to sound, um, what would be the word, Pollyannish or um, not realistic, but but I would hope that we could work together. There's a lot of people, a lot of really smart people and a lot of people that really care. And so, you know, can we work together with our student athletes to find us a path that's sustainable forward and, and we're not just constantly, um, you know, one lawsuit after another or um, things that just aren't manageable. So uh, we'll see, I guess. <laughs> But I do think that um, there are people that are in it for the right reasons, and and uh, hopefully we could find a more stable path moving forward. Obviously, well, I don't have the answer, Nick. <laughs> no, no crystal ball in in, in your office uh, in the Conference USA office, I guess, huh? But I, I, I'm willing to be part of the solution and and keep working hard. Well, Judy, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate uh, everything you do for college athletics and uh, sharing your perspectives with us today. Uh, good luck the rest of the season as we head down the home stretch. Thanks very much, Nick, and appreciate what you guys are doing there at bowl season. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Tax Act knows watching college football is fun. Doing your taxes? Not so much. That's why they make filing simple. So let's get them over with. Tax Act, the official tax filing software of bowl season. Go to taxact.com to get started today. Our next guest is in his rookie season with the Buffalo Bills after a four-year college career with the Tulane Green Wave. This linebacker was named the defensive MVP of last year's Goodyear Cotton Bowl in his final college football game. Please welcome to the show, Dorian Williams. Dorian, thanks so much for joining us, buddy. Uh, thank you for having me. We're going to jump right into the, the bowl game experience a little bit and then move on to some other things. You played in three different bowl games throughout your career at Tulane, if I'm not mistaken, the Armed Forces Bowl, Idaho Potato Bowl, then, of course, the Goodyear Cotton Bowl last year. Talk about the experiences off the field that make bowl games a crucial part of the college football experience. Everybody, all the fans turn on the games and they, they watch, you know, another football game for three hours. But some people don't realize you get there three or four days in advance and you get to experience all these really cool things with your teammates. Um, yes, sir. You know, um, so the Cotton Bowl, we spent like a week out there um, in, uh, in Dallas before the game. And it was an amazing event. They did an amazing job setting up everything. Um, just spending time with your teammates in a, a new area, I think, is a, a very fun thing. They have uh, events planned for you. So, I mean, it's, it's an amazing time. It was an amazing time for, like, team bonding. I know during the Armed Forces Bowl my sophomore year, um, you know, we just had a great time with each other, and that kind of built the bond for some of the things that happened later in the, uh, in our career. And uh, uh, Boise State, we went up there to Boise State for Idaho Potato Bowl. You know, that one, you know, it 
during COVID, so we didn't have much time, you know, to get to spin and do the team events like we we could before. But I mean, just going there, seeing Boise was amazing as well. Was there snow on the ground when you were up in Boise? Uh, it was a little bit. So you know, we got a lot of guys from Louisiana. It was a lot of their first time seeing snow. It's coming down while we're playing, so that was amazing for them to finally get to see that. Yeah, I hope there was no snowballs thrown around. You never know. <laughs> But you were part of the greatest single season turnaround in college football history. That's pretty cool. You'll always be able to say that. Going from one and eleven in twenty twenty one to twelve and two in twenty two. That's a mouthful. Talk about the process of turning around a program like that in such a short period of time, and the belief system that you and your teammates must have had along the way. Um. Yeah, I know. Um, the two and ten year, I knew we we all knew we were better than that. You know, playing Oklahoma. We all knew it was a very close. It was a very close game. We kind of knew it was like a, a turning point. We all thought we could win the conference after that. But I mean, guys went down. Um, our mental wasn't wasn't where it needed to be, and we knew, you know, as a defense, as a team, we had to have an identity, and uh, that was something that you know we we was big on during that summer was building an identity, um, building our way of playing football, and you know, just building the overall brotherhood at Tulane. Well, I give you a lot of credit, buddy. You obviously saw something in that program. You, you obviously felt some type of connection there. Because in this age of the transfer portal, you could have very easily left after a 1-11 and season, and probably not a lot of people would have blamed you for it. What made you stay in New Orleans after that? I, I guess I'm wrong. You said 2-10. and 10. What made you stay in New Orleans after that season uh, and be able to help your team get to where they were last year? Um, it was a love for my guys. I mean, I was always big on – you know, um, like a family environment, you know, playing for, for more than just me. Um, I mean, we had we had people call and try and get other guys on our team, try and get me off our team, you know. And, um, it was just like we had a brotherhood here. We knew what we were capable of doing, and we knew we just had to put it together. And we all had trust in each other to go out there and do it. So, I mean, having that love for one another, it was, it was easy to come back for. Yeah, That's I love that. Not, not enough people think that way. You know what I mean? When you have something special and you feel good with a group of people, like why would you want to jeopardize that? Right. And oh, for sure. I mean, like, I mean, I understand some guys, you know, with the NIL, you know, getting more money and everything, but I felt like me um, being in a position I was, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, the NFL will be there, you know, you all, the money will be there at the end of the day. Just keep, keep balling, keep doing what you've been doing. Just gonna come. That's right. Well, it paid off for you. You know, we, we talked, we mentioned last year, 2023 Cotton Bowl, now you were losing by 15 with 4:30 left in the game to USC. Obviously, I think everybody thought USC was going to win that game. They're winning by 15, but then something happened. Well, tell me about what was happening on the Tulane sidelines, and can you take us through that feeling and the energy in AT AT&T Stadium at that moment? Oh, for sure, it was definitely tough. You know, um, a lot of guys just you know looking around like, man, like how how can we get it done? You know, we're kicking the ball off at this point as well. Like the guys just went down and the offense just went down and scored. So uh, I mean, those the we just knew we had to give the offense a chance. We had we gotta stop stop Caleb Williams. Um give the offense a chance to to go down and score. So uh Casey kicked it off, put it in the corner. The guy kinda of, kinda of muffed it, dropped it at the one. The defense I was like, hey man, we had you know we had one interception. I was like, other than that, we haven't really done too much this whole game. I was like, this is our, you know, this is our point to make a plan, like, for this bowl game. Make defense be known for a play during this bowl game. And, you know, those guys went on and did a great job. Patrick Jenkins and uh, Noah Talley, they did a great job running the stunt, uh, getting the safety, and, you know, the rest is history. Well, that that's a memory that'll live forever. You know, I can't imagine how many times that's going to be replayed and how many stories you and your teammates are going to have over the years. I th think everybody's role in that is probably going to, going to grow and get embellished over time. But uh, what a cool, what a cool memory for you guys. Yes, sir. Now you're a kid from the South. You grew up in South Carolina and went, went to college in New Orleans, but now you're playing in the NFL in Buffalo. How has the adjustment been to the weather in Buffalo, both in terms of an environment to play football as well as in your everyday life? I mean, Buffalo has been amazing. I mean, we have, the best fans in the NFL, you know, they're rowdy. Um, they're going to let you know about it, man. And, uh, you know, we appreciate them. We love them. And, uh, I mean, far as it is, like, uh, it's snowing right now. So, uh, you know, it, it gets it gets chilly. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer in, like, for games, no sleeves. So, you know, just rubbing in some Vaseline, getting all that, that extra warmth in. But the, the team does a good job of keeping us warm. 
for sure. Talk about the transition from college football to professional football. What are some of the biggest challenges you face and how are you adapting to the pro game? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, everybody's great here. Everybody's great. Uh, I think schematically, there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of di different terminology, a lot of different ways, you know, coaches want things to be played. So um, just understanding the, the terminology and everything is, is major. I think uh, the biggest transition for me. You mentioned the fan base. They even have their own nickname, the Bills Mafia. It's known as one of the most enthusiastic fan bases in all of sports. How does it feel to be a part of that culture and to have that crowd supporting you the way they do? Oh, man, it feels amazing. You know, you go out in the, you know, everyday life out here and they're, you know, they'll let you know if you're at like Lowe's, grocery store, you know, go Bills. Uh, it's just amazing, you know, to have that so much energy and love behind you. You know, it kind of, it, it makes you want to play more for them, honestly. You know, I mean, you can't beat it, man. You can't beat it. I love it. I love it here. I mean, it's been amazing. Last question for you, Dorian. It's, it was only four or five years ago that you were, you know, being recruited to go to college and, and here you are in the NFL. So, you know, you, you've grown so many ways that I'm sure you're aware of. There's probably some ways that you, you, you know, you probably don't even think about, but if you could go back in time and give 17 year old Dorian one piece of advice based on what you know now, what would it be? Oh man. I would say have fun. Like football, man, you know, a lot of people get caught up in like, like stats or, you know, Scouts looking and stuff in college, like man, at the end of the day, it's still football, man. Just go out there, have fun, uh, play your way, and um, you know, just have fun, man. That's what it's all about. At the end of the day, it's still a game. Uh, have fun, go out there, and make plays. That's good stuff. Well, Dorian, thanks so much for joining us. I know you're busy. You're in the middle of the season. Um, you got a long way to go. So good luck the rest of the way. I enjoy, loved watching you on Saturdays. I like watching you on Sundays. So I want to. I want to see you uh, uh, keep playing in the playoffs. So good luck yes, to sir. you. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. Take yeah. care. Thank you. Vapor Apparel has all your game day essentials. From eco-friendly, lightweight sun protection shirts and hoodies to cozy joggers and Sherpa fleece pullovers, Vapor has the layers you need to get outside and stay out longer. Plus, as Bowl Season's official apparel sponsor, they're creating limited edition shirts for bowl-bound teams made with 100% reprieve fiber from recycled water bottles. Want to celebrate your team's bowl bid with official bowl bound gear? Get yours and explore more at bowlseason.com. Well, that'll do it for this week's podcast. If you missed any of our past episodes, you can catch them on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, or anywhere else you listen to your podcasts. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd appreciate you to like, subscribe, and drop a five-star rating. And as always, you can follow all the Bowl Season news on our website, bowlseason.com, and on social media at Bowl Season. Thanks for listening.